Coney Island is a legend. Located in Brooklyn, New York, right on the beach, this has been a tourist destination for over a century. I've been here a few times, first in 2008, then 2015, and most recently this past July. The first two times, I rode the cyclone and nothing else. In 2008, the park was called Astroland, and there wasn't much else there. The park was looking for a new operator in 2009, and Zamperla won the contract in 2010. Since then, they filled the park with their own rides, and expanded the park to encompass Dino's Wonder Wheel Amusement Park. In 2015, I rode the cyclone, but to be honest, I didn't feel like shelling out the money to ride the other stuff, and I wasn't wearing the right pants for coaster riding. I know, first world problems. In 2021, I was gonna do it all, not just at Luna Park, but also at Dino's Wonder Wheel. And today, I'm gonna talk about my experience at Coney Island on Wednesday, July 21st, 2021. Before we start, if you can drop this video a like, I'd appreciate it. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. At least in 2021, you just can't walk into Luna Park and ride. You need to reserve a four hour block of time. Go online and see what's available. I paid $55 for those four hours, but I got unlimited access to seven coasters, as well as the other rides. So it's really not that bad of a deal. It's a little more expensive than Adventureland, but we're talking about New York City here. You're gonna pay a little more. As for parking, I know people may be nervous about leaving your car around here, but we just parked at the baseball stadium and that ran us $13. That seemed like a pretty safe place to do it. Thanks to American Dream having all their rides closed in the morning. We got there way before our four hour window. So we hit up Dino's Wonder Wheel first. We were able to get 50 credits for $40. Good enough for two people to ride all three coasters at the park and still have 10 credits left over. It's kind of hard to tell where Luna Park ends and Dino's Wonder Wheel begins. But I say, use the wheel as your guide. It's hard to miss. I didn't ride it, but if you want to use 10 credits on it, I'd say it's worth it. It's the same design as the wheel at California Adventure. Some gondolas don't move. Others rock back and forth on a track. Right underneath the wheel, you'll find Phoenix, their brand new Vekoma suspended family coaster. I've talked about this a lot. It may be a family coaster, but it's impossible not to enjoy. The write-ups were also super nice. One of them was definitely an enthusiast, so that made it a little more fun. I should mention, this was in the middle of the week. There was a lot of rain beforehand, so there was hardly anyone there. There was a lot of time to sit around and hang out with the write-ups, just waiting for more people to come ride. Stuff like this doesn't improve the ride, but it does improve the overall experience. I got a couple rides in the back and one in the front. Both were butter smooth. The train glides over that track so quietly, but it brings some force. In the back, you get pulled through everything, and you're gonna feel it in your stomach, especially that drop near the start. In the front, you get pushed through all the elements, and that's a totally different ride experience. I'm definitely a back row rider, but if you want two totally different experiences, I say do both. Of all the Vacoma family suspended coasters that I've ridden, this one is my favorite. I haven't ridden Dragonflyer yet, but when I get back to Dollywood, I'll look forward to it. I didn't realize how good these could be. Dino's has two other coasters, but they're not much. Sea Serpent is your typical ENF Myler kitty coaster, like Canyon Blaster at Magic Mountain, Wilderness Run at Carowinds, or Great Chase at Six Flags New England. If you ride the back, you get some laterals around the drop and the helix. But other than that, it's just a kid's ride. You do get some great views of the cyclone from there, so that's something. The other coaster is Skyflyer. Without a doubt, the saddest credit I've ever gotten. There aren't too many coasters that I'm taller than, but this is one of them. This is an SPF Visa micro coaster, and we got nine laps around the course. I think that's a record for me. It's an embarrassing credit, so if you're with a kid, or better yet, another enthusiast, you can get this credit with a bit less shame. I had Jack with me. You may know him on YouTube as Coaster John. So we got to embarrass ourselves together. Once our window opened for Luna Park, we got our wristbands and went straight for the cyclone. This might be the most iconic coaster in the world, dating back to 1927, and inspiring replicas all over the globe. We rode this a few times, and like I mentioned before, this place was empty. This meant we never got to ride it in the back. They needed to front load the trains, and we could never get on a train with enough people on it to get the back. We only got as far back as row four. That was too bad, but there was plenty to enjoy in the front. The seats are very small, extremely hard for two full-size adults to fit, and the lap bar has a double bar that presses down on your lap, but at least it's very well padded. In the front, it's super smooth. As you move back a couple rows, it gets a little rougher. I would have liked to see how it runs in the very back these days, but I never got the chance. For a coaster that's 94 years old, I have no complaints. It's amazing how great it runs. I didn't get much airtime in the front, a little more toward the middle, and there are some really strong laterals around the turns. This is extra fun when you're squishing the train with another person. Cyclone is still the best ride at Coney Island, and it still holds up as an actually good ride. Not just good because it's famous, good because it's good. There are three sections of Luna Park, and Cyclone sits outside all of them. The zone right next to Cyclone is where all the kids' rides are. 
This is the only section that'll scan your wristband when you walk in. So you aren't allowed in there unless you paid to ride, and it's your time slot. The best coaster in this section is the Tickler, a spinning mouse with a creepy theme. There are so many of these spinning mouse coasters, but they all seem to run different. They're common in fairs, and smaller parks, and parks that Six Flags doesn't like that much. Tickler is the first one that I remember that starts spinning on the first set of hairpin turns. Usually, it doesn't start spinning until the second round, but in this case, we didn't spin in the second half, so this one was totally backwards. Creepy theme, mediocre ride. The circus coaster was interesting, and it was a semi-enjoyable ride. I describe it as a super-sized kitty coaster. Some people would call this a family coaster, but it still seemed like a ride designed for little kids, just a little bigger. It's hard to explain, and maybe I sound weird, but whatever you call it, it was pretty good for what it was. Their third coaster is the Minnie Mouse. This was closed all day, and we kept holding out hope that it would open, but it never did. You want to know when you're a sad credit hog? When you keep checking to see if this tiny kid's coaster is going to open. I rode this same model at Wild Adventures, so at least I know how it rides. We left the kids' area, passed by Dino's Wonder Wheel, and onto the Scream Zone. The biggest bits of my trip to Coney Island was Steeplechase. This motor coaster model is a lot of fun. I rode it at Darien Lake, but it never opened all day. When you get a slow, rainy weekday, you get no lines, but you also get closed rides. It's the give and take. If this runs anything like the one at Darien Lake, you can expect an intense turn after the launch. This winds you all the way up to the top, but after that, it's a lot of meandering. I would have loved to ride it. I'll just have to save it for next time. The other coaster was one that I was nervous about, Soarin' Eagle. If you saw my winners and losers video, this was actually on the winners list. I hate the Volare model, or the Volare model, or the Volare model, however you say it, I didn't like it. Time Warp was one of the most dreadful experiences of my life, but this one was good. Well, it was good for what it was. A portable, compact ride that puts you on your stomach and flips you around with tight turns. This one started out at a pretty nasty park, Elitch Gardens, so at least now it's got better surroundings. Anyway, the reason I like this one was the cars. Time Warp has pads around your head, and you can't stop slamming your ears into them. Your head is free and clear on Soarin' Eagle, so I got to enjoy the ride for what it was. I wasn't planning my face on the chin rest, waiting for the pain to end. I felt like I was flying around Coney Island in a tiny cage. The coaster all by itself on the western side of Luna Park is Thunderbolt. This was the last major coaster Zamperla installed, going back to 2014, and it looks very impressive from the outside. A vertical lift, near vertical drops, airtime hills, inversions. It seems like every element is good. My first ride on this was in the back, and it was janky, rough, and painful. Such weird profiling in that zero-g roll, and the whole first half is pretty jarring. You really have to ride defensively. When we went into that turnaround, I even slammed my head on the headrest. The return trip is pretty good, a corkscrew and some ejector hills. The restraints are pretty restrictive, a big bar on your lap and shoulder straps, and even with my smoother ride in the front, I still got some shoulder digging on that dive loop. All in all, after my first ride, I thought it was one of the worst coasters I'd ever ridden, but after that front row ride, I thought it was halfway decent. One other note, these have three rows across, and that first time, I rode the edge. On my second ride, I got the middle, and my brother got the inverse of that, and he said the first ride was okay, and the second one sucked. So maybe it's less about front and back, and more about edge versus middle. If you have any thoughts on which rows or seats are good or bad, let me know. I left Coney Island having a pretty good time. I was very impressed with Phoenix. I was happy to see Cyclone still running great, and I was surprised to see that a good Volare can exist. The only real disappointment was missing out on Minnie Mouse and Steeplechase. You aren't going to find much merchandise here. Just a small gift shop in the kids' area, plus that little stand outside Cyclone. As for food, you have to go to Nathan's. This is where they have the hot dog eating contest on the 4th of July, so it's famous, and it's good. We also went there on National Hot Dog Day, so we got 5 cent hot dogs. We went back there later for burgers, also excellent. They have other places to eat near the beach where you can get stuff like calamari, so if you're into that, check it out. If you've been to Coney Island, let me know what you think. How has the park changed over the years? Are you happy with the changes Zamperla has made over the last decade? They seem to want to keep expanding. They're working on a new family coaster and log flume, both twisting around each other, and you can see the progress they are making right there next to Thunderbolt. Zamperla is not the best coaster manufacturer, so I don't think they'll ever get anything notable, but they'll keep adding stuff for us to ride, and that's good enough for me. If you have any other thoughts about Luna Park, or Dino's Wonder Wheel, or any of these coasters, sound off in the comments below. Before you go, don't forget to drop a like and give me a sub, and check out my playlist for other park reviews. Also, check out my links below for my Discord server, and my second channel where I post copyright-free off-ride footage. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.